routine macro, FRQ number two. Um, Fisherland produces only consumer and capital goods. The graph above shows the PPC for Fisherland, the production of which of the following exhibits increasing opportunity cost. Consumer, I guess this means for consumer goods only, for capital goods only, both goods, neither good. Uh, anytime you see a bowed out PPC, uh, it has increasing opportunity cost, obviously for both goods. The understanding here is no matter whether you start producing more consumer goods, the opportunity cost of capital goods would increase, or if you start producing more capital goods, the opportunity cost for consumer goods are going to increase as we produce more capital goods. So that one takes a little bit of thinking, but um, just think about it uh, a bit, that it does have to be both goods. Uh, redraw the graph above showing a point that represents fully employed and efficiently used resources on the redrawn graph and label it A. So fully employed, full employment, and efficiently used resources implies that we must be on the curve. So we'll label that A. This is consumer. This is capital. Uh, assume there is a recession in Fisherland. On your graph in Part B, label C representing the recession. Recessions are always shown as inside the curve. People, we have what we call idle resources, and those idle resources are people. People are unemployed. Obviously, recessions are the points inside the curve. Uh, and we're supposed to label it C? All right. So C, identify a fiscal policy action that Fisherland government can take to address the recession. River, remember that government or fiscal policy are two things, either government spending or taxes. To get us out of a recession, government spending would have to increase or taxes going down. Remember, even no matter what the government does here, government spending or taxes, the best we can do is get back to the curve. So if everybody was to go back to work, we'd still only reach A. We would become more efficient. People would be employed, not unemployed, and we would go back to that point right there. Assume instead that no discretionary policy actions are taken. Will short-run aggregate supply curve increase, decrease, or remain the same in the long run? So this is that short-run to long-run classical view of if there's no monetary policy or no fiscal policy, what happens in the long run? And we know when we're talking about classical, we know wages and prices are flexible. Let's go through it real quickly just so we can see it. And these are almost answered. Now, they're not asking you. All they're asking you for is the short run increase, decrease, or remain the same. I'm going to just show you that whole effect here because it's important. There's a lot of these questions that we have to answer. So we're in a recession. Price level, real GDP. There is no fiscal and no monetary policy. The classical guys in the long run, in the long run, think wages and prices are perfectly flexible. So we are in a recession. My question to you is if everybody has lost, or many people have lost their jobs, will people take lower wages to go back to work? If we're in a recession and people are out of work, will they take lower wages to go back to work? Absolutely, they will. If wages go down, we know businesses can also lower their prices. We also imply that input prices have gone down, so that kind of takes care of both of those. We would say wages and prices will fall. When wages go down, how does that affect your short-run aggregate supply curve? Understand that when wages go down, this is business costs. If business costs go down, your short-run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right. So we say when wages and prices fall, short-run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right. Let's draw it in. It'll go right back through that little point right there. And we can see that we will return back to long run equilibrium or full employment at a lower price level. There's a lot of these, and this is about the shortest you can answer it. 
We always want to say from her, if we started out at full employment, we went to a recession. In the long run, we will turn back to long run equilibrium at a lower price level due to those lowering of wages and prices. So we've kind of already ended. Will short run aggregate supply increase, decrease, or remain the same? We know it will increase and shift right. And we would explain it uh, just using those words over there that in a recession, people will take lower wages, prices will fall, input prices will fall, short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right due to those wages going down, uh, will return back to long run equilibrium at a lower price level. All right, guys, that was quick. Take care. Be safe.